Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Let's Hear It. Today's guest is James Willis. Uh, and I wanted to bring him on because he's an artist. Uh, he's a musician, but I'm bringing him on to talk about his paintings. And he paints on guitar cases and on guitars and makes amazing paintings. And I saw one of his Merle Haggard cases in Carter Vintage Guitars uh, about five years ago, four years ago. And I got that from him uh, as a present for an uh, artist that I was working with. And uh, we kind of became pals. And uh, if you follow his Instagram, it's amazing to see all the great work he does. So he's going to come on and tell us about uh, guitar painting and guitar case painting. And um, I think you'll dig it. So hang on. Here he is. Hello, James. Howdy. Nice Good to morning. see you. Good to see you. I know you uh, you live between Nashville and New York City, and uh, you're yeah. in New York City right now, right? I'm in New York City. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. In fact, where I'm where I, where well, we stay in Nashville it would probably pretty much fit in this room. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. The, the brick submarine, the nice. studio, or the brick submarine. That's how it's lovingly referred to. So. That's a good tight. title. It's tight down there. Um, so, so tell me. Uh, I, I know you're you're a guitar player. When did you start with the idea of? Well, obviously, you've been painting or drawing your whole life. But how did what led you towards uh, painting on guitars and cases? It, it's it's funny, man. And I'll try to keep this short because when I think about it, you know, it's one of those things that I th I think I thought I just started doing, but. As I get to this stage in my life and I look back, I realize that I've always done it, you know. Mm. So, I mean, literally the first guitar I had was, you know, it was $15 from a, you know, vintage shop that my aunt bought for me for like mowing her grass. And the first thing I did was, you know, spray painted it purple. So, <laughs> so it was like fretting a fence, but it was a purple fence. And so uh, I kind of I was thinking about it the other day and I, I sort of always uh, anything that I get attached to, I, you know, I just start editing it, you know. Hmm. And, and so I've, uh, I realized really that that there are probably a lot of my guitar cases in the world that that like I, I remember that the one I did where I slowly over the course of about a month had peeled every sticker you could get off the back of a New York city taxi in the back seat. Remember they used to have all those stickers. Oh yeah. And I made it, it was a Telecaster case and I made it just like a taxi. I painted it like a taxi and I put all the stickers on it. And that was, you know, 25 years ago. And, and those cases were never for sale. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, you know, I didn't want to be the guy who was doing that kind of stuff for, for money. You know, I mean, I had, I moved to New York to study painting, classical painting. And then I worked as a cartoonist for years. And then I ran and uh, owned a multimedia studio for 12 years. Hmm. And so about 12 years ago, I bailed out of that and went back to painting. And and so I, I didn't want, there are certain things that I, I, you know, I think I didn't want them to become like a business again because I was fried on the business yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. And um, guitar cases were one of those things. I would, you know, I'd have a guitar case laying around. And I'd paint it and people would occasionally they'd say, hey, can I buy that? And I'd be like, no, but, you know, if you buy the guitar, you're going to have the case. And so <laughs> that's kind of the way it went. And uh, and I had painted a couple of cases as gifts for like Molly Bedell in, in Nashville. And then Christy Carter you know, kind of came at me one day and, and was, you know, was just begging me to paint a case just to sell, you know? Mm. And I, you know, I said to her, um, you know, I've kind of been wanting to paint a saint, but like an actual saint, like Mary, you know, on a case, but make it a country music person. And she said, yeah, that'd be great. So I did one, I took it down to her and I, I don't think I was back to my studio yet when she, called me and said, you know, an unnamed person wants 12 of those. And I was like, that's not going to happen. You know? <laughs> and it, it did. And now I'm up to uh, just with the saints, I'm up to uh, 74, I think. 
Hmm. That's They're amazing. Not- well, that's yeah. kind of where I want to start because that's how I became aware of you when I saw your Merle Haggard case. And then I've seen most of the saints And I love that you call them the saints because they're obviously saints of the music world. But uh, let's let's start here with the uh, the king. There he is, Elvis. Yeah, Yeah. Um, beautiful. Yeah, and and that's um, that's a '68 comeback tour, Elvis, which also happened to be case number '68. So that was kind of neat. That's awesome. Um, And then the other one is the young Elvis, you know, and. And when I work on these things, you know, I mean, I'm a, a classically trained painter and I treat these guitar cases just like any other piece of art that I do. The, the painting of the case is the easy part. I really do agonize over the sketches and I really do try to, you know, make it, you know, something that's legit, you know. And uh, and with both of these, you know, it. Um, they both went to the same home too, which is kind of interesting. So I just try to kind of, you know, make it feel like a real thing, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, it's a, a great image of, have you painted a uh, sad bloated Elvis? No, I haven't, but you know, I mean, I love to sad bloated Elvis too. I do too. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, I mean, you know, Elvis Elvis was out in front of the curb, you know, musicians didn't, you know, we, he was, a, he was kind of the first guy that we really got to see get caught up into the uh, private doctor world, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it was going on, I'm sure, but, but yeah, I feel bad for Elvis, you know, now I think he'd have, he'd have made it, you know, if he was around today. He, might, he, he probably would have. You know, yeah. People, would, people would have recognized what was happening. Yeah. Maybe. Um, Let's go. That to heavy, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so check this one. I love this as well, of course, and I think people will love this. But there they are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I put the band back together. That's great. Yeah, and I wouldn't. I've, I've I've done that once before. I did it once before, way back, but it happened accidentally. Like I just happened to have painted all four of the Beatles separately, and mm-hmm. uh, and those do all belong to one person. But in this case, it was from the beginning. You know, I'm putting the band back together. The cases are going to feel like they belong together, and uh, and and those all went at, to one to one home too. So, mm-hmm. so these look like what are they? Dreadnought size? They're TKL yeah, they're, cases. They're, they're TKL, and the reason for that is. Um, getting back to my, you know, I don't know if it's OCD or what it is, but like, um, you know, I've customized motorcycles in the past and I've customized guitars and I've done, I've customized a lot of stuff, but it's got to be real and it's got to work. And so a lot of early on people were, were coming to me and they were like, Hey, you know, can you paint on this old case or can you paint on that old case? And and I made the decision that no, I'm going to paint on, all brand new custom TKL cases. So I don't, you know, if you're going to hang it on the wall, that's groovy, you know, but if you want to carry your damn guitar in it, it's going to work and it's going to be a great case. Yeah. So that's, that's why they're all on TKL cases. And, and, so, the, and, and, and TKL has been great to me too. You know, they, they like, you know, I, I guess maybe they like the idea that all these things are on TKL cases. Yeah. But, but it's uh, it's worked out. They've been they're really great people. Yeah, um, and so when you do like a series like this of the four Beatles, did you do them consecutively? I did. Yes, yeah. they were sort of, you know, I mean, but all the sketches were done first, you know. So like I did all four sketches, and then I just take each case. You know, when I'm when I'm, I only work on one thing at a time, I never work on you know, multiple things when I'm working on something that's got my full attention. And, and that's the way, that's the way my whole life is, you know, yeah. if I'm doing something, I'm not thinking about something else, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm with my kids, the house can burn down around us. I'm not going to notice I'm with the kids, but if I'm working on something, the house can burn down. I'm not going to notice cause I'm working on something. So, <laughs> well, I hope that doesn't happen. I, no, yeah. I don't, I, you know, I think that's all stemming back to the, fuel source is back over my shoulder that we the, the drying out Christmas tree. Yeah. 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 
I think that got into my head. So. <laughs> um, let's see, what do I got next? I, I love this. Uh, I love this Merle Haggard one. And this is what, this is the one that I saw that, that uh, drew yeah. me to you. It's beautiful. There, there's, there's something about this case that you don't know. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but it's very unusual. And here's why it's unusual. Um, I've never, ever painted the same case twice, except this time. Mm. And the reason I did it was because, you know, Christy Carter called me and Christy's a great friend. And she said it was for Rhett and Link. And I love Rhett and Link. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. So, so there are actually two murals in the world. It's, awesome. it's slightly different, but they, he's like, he wanted it and it's gone and I'm feel terrible. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll do it for you. So that's kind of a, a rare one right there. Yeah. And for anybody who's watching, who doesn't know who Rhett and Link are, they're uh, comedians, uh, great, funny comedians. They have a YouTube show um, that has about 15 million subscribers and they, they are actually fantastic musicians and singers and they write funny songs, but they also write serious songs and they're really great. And they love Merle Haggard. And I uh, had done a tour with them in 2017 and a couple after that. And, um, they just love Merle. And I saw that case when we were in Nashville doing one of their shows. And I was like, ah, we got to get that for them as a gift. And that's how I got in touch with you. I asked, I asked her and she got me in touch with you and uh, you were yeah. nice enough to do it. And we got it to them in time for Christmas. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And the top of the, the top of that Merle case is, is one of my favorite, like top of the case resolutions ever. Mm. You know, fortunately, I can't zoom in on it from the way. Yeah, this well, it's a highway, you know, going off into the distance, and it's sort of like the ethereal mural up there, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, let's see, let's see what else we got. Um, there's so many good ones. So I think you said you've done 74 saints now. I think I'm up to. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, hey, Billy, and he is number 75. This is a brand new one, right? That's so I saw I'm you post. On. I saw you post this drawing on Instagram yesterday. Yeah, this and so uh, at first it was Peter Frampton, you know, because I had this little window that opened up, which is kind of rare, like that I'm that I'm able to do a. Ca my cases are, you know, for the last year, 100 percent commissions, mm -hmm. and and it doesn't change the way I work on it, but it adds a little bit of stress on me because it's somebody else's. You know, yeah. like, I mean, already, you know, it's somebody else's. So it just adds a little bit of, you know, my willingness to sort of like take a big risk with something that's mine is just full out there, you know. But, sure. well, well, you know, so it gets into my head. So I thought I had this window and, and I wanted to do Peter Frampton because, you know, I'd been sort of sitting on that one because, he, you know, just a, such a huge effect on my life, you know that guy. Um, and, uh, and then I thought, wow, you know, I kind of want to do, uh, Billy Gibbons too, you know? And so I sketched out Billy Gibbons and, and sure enough, somebody, somebody bought the case from the sketch. So I'm working on <laughs> Billy now, but with the stress of, you know, mm. he's going to belong to somebody else. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, so. here we go. This is very small, but I love this Tex Ritter one. That was for uh, Tex Ritter's um, granddaughter. Really? Wedding present. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, Darren Nay, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name. You know, read him. Oh, yeah. He was in uh, The Mother Hips. Yeah. So Darren reached out to me and wanted to have this, uh, this thing done. Um, and I was totally into it, man, because I was into Tex Ritter, you know, and I was into John Ritter. And, uh, <laughs> And I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then he told me, you know, so I had like a, he said, you got like a week to do it. And I'm like, yeah, no problem, you know. And I started it. And, uh, and so I called him up. I was like, hey, I'm done. He's like, cool. It's got to be in L.A. tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. So, yeah, that was an expensive shipping package, right? Maybe the most I've ever paid. But overnight, and she got it for the wedding. Oh, that's great. So, so yeah. 
Yeah. That's a, that's a great tale. I, I think I've got one more of these. Then I want to I want to show a couple others. I, I've got the uh, the case that you did for Nikki Lane that we're going to show in a sec. Oh, that oh. went out of order. But let's talk about this because this is Davy Crockett and this is you painting on a guitar. Yeah. Yeah, this was a this was a good one. So I should say that up until about one year ago, I'd I'd been asked many times to paint on guitars, and I'd always said no. And the reason that I'd always said no was that I'm not a luthier. I do customized instruments, and I make weird things, make weird instruments out of like deer heads and stuff. But I'm I'm not a luthier, and so I didn't want to get into. Uh, a affecting the sound of a guitar mm -hmm. and then B, you know, trying to deal with the finish and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I just always said no. And uh, somebody talked me into doing a, a, you know, a Waterloo of all things uh, last year. And I found this company in Detroit that makes this like paint that basically you could hit it with a blowtorch and it would stay. And, uh, and so I started painting on guitars. And so I've done maybe, 20 this year um this guitar in particular was cool because this instrument uh it's like an old harmony and uh, it, it went from dad it was a dad it was this guy's dad's guitar and he like rescued it from like the attic and it was just i mean beat down and he repaired it and he wanted to give it to his son and the Consistent thing with that was that they always read this Daniel Boone, Disney Daniel Boone story to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, there he is, Daniel Boone, right there on the thing. And, and that guitar also has a case with, uh, you know, the Daniel Boone story painted Why on it. Why did I think it was Davy Crockett? I'm sorry, man. I keep calling him Daniel Boone. It is Davy Crockett. Ah. Okay. I was saying that to him the whole time and causing him like to have anxiety attacks. He was and like, no. man, Daniel Boone. <laughs> it's Davey because Crockett. of the coonskin cap. That was yeah, the it's, Davey it's Crockett Davey, trademark. Davey Crockett. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see what else we got here. All right. Aha, love this. So this yeah, is B.B. King and the upside down one that you can't really see is Ray Charles. And th that B.B. King image was amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was happy with both of those. Yeah. Um, again, my, my favorite part of the B.B. King was kind of doing the whenever whenever I'm going to do one of these cases, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, I, I just kind of take a fresh look at them, you know, and I dig through and I read about them. And, that, and the, you can't really see it on this picture, but that's a picture of his house that he grew up in, up in that little circle. Yeah. Um, you know, like little, you know, sharecropper shack, basically, in, in uh, Mississippi. And so, you know, those kind of things, when they when I discover them, it just makes, I feel like, you know, I mean, it's a learning process for me. I feel like every time I... I do one of these things. I, I I listen to their music the whole time I'm painting it, and I, I you know it sounds flaky, but if you know me, you know it's true. Um, I just like totally channel them, man. I just open myself up. If they're gone, I open myself up. If they're still here, I open myself up. And uh, yeah, in, in fact, whenever I, I've done Jimmy Page twice, and 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 both times, like the very last thing I do, like the very last thing I do is write Zoso on it because I'm like, I don't want I don't want Zoso in my studio, man. You know, yeah. I'm open up to it, so it can happen. Yeah. Um, well, I think what I've got here is so just uh, to go through the process of how you do this. So this is uh, this is the beginning of the process, right? So this is this is a case you made for Nikki Lane, yeah, yeah. of Nikki Lane, who is yeah. that? Yeah, really awesome. Well, well really, the this is kind of the beginning. So, you know, it starts off with the uh, sketch, right? Right. Which, and I'm all, and I'm always sort of even. It surprises me sometimes how. I mean, I think about it for a day or two or sometimes even more before I ever do the sketch. And then I'm, I'm kind of always surprised that when I finish the case, it's, it's, it's pretty much without any changes, you know? Mm. 
Um, but yeah, so you can see I've already drawn Nikki in and I've got her covered up with, uh, um, with paper because in this, sometimes I paint portrait first, sometimes I paint it last, but the portrait is always a separate act, you know? So it's either sometimes portrait first and then the case, sometimes the, everything else and then the portrait. Hmm. But it's usually not like a simultaneous thing. So. Uh, let's see the next the next stage. How and how long does it take you to take a case from beginning to end? So here it is here for a little bit more happening. Yeah. So I'll I'll start something like that and um I usually work uh in like nine or 10 hour surges, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, without stopping, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it depends probably, you know, I don't know, man. I kind of don't really think about it. Um, yeah. but it probably takes me somewhere around 30 or 40 hours to do a case. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, I don't know, less, sometimes less, sometimes more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how long does it take you to do the sketch? Like when you do the sketch, when you do the sketch, like yeah. when you're deciding first on the, the layout, how long does that take? That takes days. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'll, it's like I said, once the sketch is done, it's just like I'm building a model. Yeah. Sometimes I run into issues, you know, or if I ever, sometimes I do diverge from the sketch. And, and in fact, just you show me these pictures, you can see the whole outside of that case is painted in already. Everything but her name and the portrait. And sometimes I drift from the sketch. And when I do, then it really takes a long time because then I'm making decisions while I work. It would yeah. be like if you were, you know, if you write a song and then you play it on stage, but if you're on stage jamming, you know, you got to think about it in a different way, you know, and you don't always, you know, the, I, that might not be the best analogy because you have parameters when you're jamming with other people. But when I'm working on a case and I don't have a roadmap, then every choice I make, you know, is like pulling teeth. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. Well, let's take a look at the finished case here. And I, th I think it's it's amazing to see to see that process and look at that. That looks just amazing. Yeah, there's Nikki, and there was actually one mo one more little step after that one. I I think I didn't send you the very last picture. There's a color behind her ah. on the finished case, but yeah, that was a that was a fun one. I really like Nikki Lane a lot, man. She's was bad. this a uh, case that she ordered from you? I, uh, actually, she wound up with it. Oh, so great. yeah. So right, let's see what um, else we got yeah. here. Um, here we go. So this now this is uh, you've done a, a few guitars for Washburn or uh, and and cases as well. So how did how did that come about? And this well, is a much yeah, different it, approach. It, it, it looks like I have a relationship with them, but I I do and I don't. I mean. Years ago, I guess maybe it's been maybe six years ago, I had painted um, one of those Day of the Dead style treatments like this, you know, mm -hmm. which and back then, I mean, I, I just did it with like paint markers. I was just goofing around, you know, and uh, they saw it and they asked me to do one for them for NAM. They wanted wow. to have it at the NAM show. And uh, and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And, you know, when they said how much, I said, you know, send me six wash, six, six parlor guitars. And so, because I just wanted to make more guitars, you know. And yeah. at the time, I wasn't doing it to sell them, really, because I hadn't crossed over that that, 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 that line, you know, to where I was doing it and, you know, thinking of it as something other than kind of a novelty, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are... Um, and so now, uh, you know, occasionally, um, you know, if somebody says, Hey, well, you know, you want to, will you paint one of those guitars for me? I, I recommend this, this Washburn. So, yeah. 
And that, yeah. that's the back of the guitar, and that's beautiful. Yeah, that's I love it. And, of course, you paint the case as well. And yeah. these Washburn parlors, so old parlor guitars used to come in these things called coffin cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's I love the closest that. I've been able to come to getting a coffin case. <laughs> yeah. Well, here you go. And the, uh, Well, there's the case open. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and uh, early on when they were making them, they, they actually um, they didn't have the indention. So they really looked like little coffins. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Now, this washburn is spectacular. That's and one of the very early ones. Yeah, that was my personal guitar. Wow. I just liked it. So I'd gone crazy on it. You know? <laughs> and uh, the back um, has. Uh, I don't know if I sent you a picture of the back. I don't think I have the back. It's two skeleton hands holding a broken heart, like the hearts, like separated. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's one. That was just mine. You know, it was around. So it's a little over the top, but it actually wound up in a good home. Uh, I don't know if you know Trey Ackerman or not, but his dad was Willie Ackerman, the drummer from Hee Haw. Okay, awesome. And so Trey has that guitar, and it's much loved, and it gets played. He's a great songwriter, great player, and so it always makes me feel good to see it out there. Getting I think I saw a picture of him playing it. Um, Pro yeah, probably. Yeah. And that's obviously what, a, na a national-style resonator guitar? Yep. A metal yeah. guitar. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's a Washburn, but it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a cool one. Yeah. That's great. So, and then, uh, I, you know, I have, I, I have this little part uh, in the 1880s parlor that I just painted sitting here by my foot. You want to see it? Yeah, let's see that. So, and th this is when they, this is when they start to get scary though, because, you know, I'm really kind of doing my, you see the little hummingbird at the top. Yeah. And, uh. and, and of course the, the person that commissioned this, they wanted one of those day of the dead style things but you know i can't do it. i you know i saw it and i'm like no nah, i'm painting a hummingbird and so you know i think i forget what they called it decalomania or something when those oh yeah those are stellar guitars yeah and so you know i feel like i'm you know tipping my hat to a tradition i'm not you know being a total jerk you know yeah and messing them up but I, I think this one's pretty happy. It looks know, awesome. That way. So yeah, just just did that one, and uh, but again, it gets scarier. The, the 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 because I had my own rules that I'm breaking by painting on them, you know. Right. And so I, I use this enamel paint, and I almost paint them like paint by numbers. And mm -hmm. the reason that I do that is um, because I'm thinking that I'm making individual plates of paint. So it's not like I'm putting my hand down on the face of the guitar. I'm putting a pile of pennies on the front. So it's still allowing for some vibration. So, you know, so people have said to me, well, it's look like paint by numbers. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going for. You know, I'm, I'm separating the sections of paint mm -hmm. so the surface can, so I'm not affecting the, the vibration of the surface. It's a weird, Great. you know. So how far there. away is that one from being done? Oh, it's done. That was done. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, there we go. There's that coffin. Well, this is a different one, but there's yeah, a that's different one. painting on the coffin case. Yeah. That looks yeah. Nice. Yeah, and that one. Uh, that one on the back. I, a lot of times, I'll put stuff on the back. Um, even when I was even the Gibsons, and uh, when I was doing custom, you know, Gibsons as artists and residents at Gibson. That's what brought me to Nashville. Um, I would do these elaborate carvings on the back of the guitar. And I think subconsciously that was part of me going, I could never even afford that guitar. I always wanted it as a kid. I'm not going to like carve it. And, and so I started, I was putting it on the back, but it also accidentally created like a, a relationship between the guy that's playing it and the world because like, Hey man, I can share this if I want to, but it can just be my personal thing too. 
Mm. So, so I do a lot of stuff on the back of things. I hide, hide stuff on the back, you know, that nobody will ever see unless, you know, you want to share it. Yeah. And so it gives you a kind of a, another secret level of rapport mm. with the, uh, um, with the, well, here, I'm going to reach down and grab another one because I happen to have one of the Gibsons. This is a war horse. And so it's all got, it's got scrimshaw on it, but you can see the back plates and everything. Oh, yeah. And then the front is a scrimshaw pick guard and it's kind of carved like the, you know, muskets back in the day. And that's in the powder horn comes with it. <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So Gibson and, brought you to Nashville as an artist in residence to make custom guitars for them. Well, that guitar is a perfect segue for that because so I'm pretty, you know, Rudy Penza in, in uh, New York. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy's guitars. Rudy, right. Yeah. So Rudy's Rudy music. and I have been friends for, you know, 30 years. Right. But a weird friendship, like Rudy loves my paintings of New York city. Right. Which is what I was doing when Gibson called me. I mean, I was no, you know, I'm a painter, old fashioned painter, you know, painting New York city. And so Rudy had a bunch of my paintings that were all guitar barters over the years. And, uh, and somebody from Gibson saw one of those paintings and they were like, Hey, can we, you know, can we get this guy to paint one of his New York city paintings on a Les Paul? And we're going to make it a New York city Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And so, um, they, you know, called me up and asked me that question. I'm pretty sure I hung up. <laughs> when they, you know, a few minutes later, you know, Rudy say, "Hey, Jimmy, that's that's Gibson." I'm like, "Oh, okay, I, think, I just saw some guy ask me to paint one of my paintings on guitar," and uh, so they sent me a. I said, "You know, no, you know, I don't really want to paint one of my paintings on a guitar, but you know, send me a blank Les Paul, and I'll include one of my paintings of New York with it, and then maybe I'll do something to the Les Paul." So they sent me the blank, and when I got the blank, I looked at it. And I'm like, yeah, now nah, that looks like a musket. <laughs> and so I made the first war horse, the guitar I just showed you. So I showed up in Nashville to meet with Rick Gimbar, and I'm supposedly have this New York City guitar, and I've got a guitar that looks like a musket. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not exactly what we asked for. I'm like, yeah, but it's, you know, it looks right, man. And he's like, it does look right. And, uh, and so we went over and, and met with Henry, and Henry was blown away. And he's like, what the hell, you know? He totally dug it. And he's like, well, what about our New York guitar? And I'm like, you know, how about artist in residence? <laughs> and everybody shocked they went for it. And so, uh, so I had this gig there where, you know, I was just making whatever I wanted to, no rules. And they went for it and came up with some crazy stuff. I did wind up doing the New York City guitar. It's got inlaid copper. The pig guard is carved from wood from a water tower on my roof in Manhattan. And, wow. and it comes with a painting of the water tower. There are two of those in the world. One guy owns them both and he's a great guy. Um, so that's how it started, man. I mm -hmm. did that for a year. And, and at the end of that year, I mean, you know, they set me up with a place and everything. And, uh, you know, I think I'd been in Nashville for about a month. I called my wife and I said, I'm not coming back. <laughs> she said, you got to come back. You're <laughs> in school. And so that's what started the back and forth. And from day one, I just felt like, you know, I spent my whole, I grew up in a tiny town in South Georgia that I love dearly. You know, the, the park downtown is Willis Park. My great grandfather standing in it. Awesome. And I just dreamed of having this community of artists in my life. I wanted to sit around and talk about, you know, impressionist sunsets, you know, with other artists. And I studied painting and I ran a multimedia company and I never found that community. It was all, you know, everybody's competing for every nickel. I get to Nashville and all of a sudden I'm, I'm in this community, but they just happen to be musicians. Yeah. And, and so they just kind of took me in and I just went with it. And now I just feel like I had this great symbiotic relationship with so many musicians who I love and respect. Guys like Oliver Wood and Amanda Shires and Zach Brown. 
and and we meet and they, I don't want anything from them. They don't want anything, you know, and it, it's just, there's no, it's just a beautiful thing. And that's the thing I love the most about it. It's that I'm in this fantasy commu uh, community of creative people, but, you know, we can be playing the same chords, but they're very different instruments. And they don't even, and sometimes they work together, you know, I wind up doing stuff for musicians or, you know, but it, yeah, I'm just in heaven. It's the best thing ever. That's I know. Great, I, and I know I'm going long. I taught Warren no. Caddy. So <laughs> I can remember when I was a kid in uh, high school. You know, I think I was in eleventh grade or something, and I was playing French horn in a concert band, which was challenging. I mean, it takes work to play the French horn. You know. Yeah. And you know just kind of not getting anywhere with the guitar and you know some of my friends were kind of firing up bands but I was already in this band that was taking a lot of my energy and I was making art you know and and I just remember going like you know what I, I can't I can't do both I'm gonna commit myself to art you know this art physical you know drawing and stuff and um but I remember I was sitting in the kitchen with my mom talking to her about that and I said, yeah, you know, one day, mom, I'm going to be like, you know, making art. And and at the time, I was just like literally obsessed carrying eight track around uh, of Peter Frampton, you know, and I was like obsessed with the guy. And uh, and I said, well, you know, one day I'm going to be like meet Peter Frampton and he's going to be like, yo, man, I dig your art, you know. So, you know, 30 years later, I'm at Gibson the day that, that, that Frampton got his black guitar back and I walked in and I met him and I happened to have a little cigar box that I'd made out of a tin of uh, peppermint bark candy and and wound up we talked and I you know gave it to him and I sat there and I showed him how to play it and, and that day I went home and I called my mom and I'm like it happened you know and so it's amazing well what it made me realize was that kind of from that day forward, I mean, all those different things that happened to me with my art and the way it moves and everything, I, I'm not chasing a dream anymore. I'm in, I'm in like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in like candy land. <laughs> I mean, I work hard, but there's no lofty goal that I'm after. I, I mean, I'm just trying to do the best I can do right now. And I, you know, I just absolutely love being in the this peripheral music world that I'm in, and uh, well, you got lots more of worlds, you know. I never have to lug an amp, but you know what? I sit down and play the guitar with Zach Brown sometimes. It's great, but I, and, and you got lots more saints to do. I want to show because uh, I'm a huge fan of cowboy guitars, which were going back to the harmonies and the 40s Gene Autry guitars and all the singing yeah. cowboys had guitars, and you're doing your own take on it. And I want to show a few of those. So there's that one, which uh, beautiful hey, my little dog. Yeah, little Gretsch guitar. Yeah, and so with with these, I'm really, you know, going for the tradition. You know, I'm 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 not reinventing the wheel. I'm I'm really kind of taking a tradition and trying to just kind of take it to the next level. You know. Yeah. Um, I do. You know, I don't think about. I know with some of the cowboy guitars I have there, you know, it's sort of be like the perfect scene right in the center, you know? So, I mean, I'm kind of blowing that up a little bit or putting them in unexpected kind of balance. Yeah. Placement. You know, I don't worry about where the stuff's going to hit. I just kind of like just go with it. But yeah, some of these are very like, I mean, it's just a straight up, Hey, you know, good job guys. I'm, I'm doing it too. Yeah. You know? That's, this is this so is this one you just did or was it a commission for somebody uh th this this was actually done uh for uh, a friend who who helped me out during the you know height of the pandemic by sticking my wife and i on a beautiful farm in the middle of nowhere for a few weeks wow. so he happened to have a gretsch guitar laying there and you know dangerous thing man i had a box of paint and you know <laughs> voila that's great. So, yeah, that was a gift. 
That's so nice. Was was he uh, awed by that? I hope. I did ask him first. You did. I said, yeah. I said, hey man, what if I paint on this guitar? And and his answer basically after he picked the phone back up was yes. <laughs> I think he really wanted me to. Nice. In fact, I think it might have been sitting out as bait. You know. And I love this one. That's maybe my favorite. Yeah. It's so good. And that guitar is in England right now, which is kind of interesting, you know. So uh, Ida May, um, you know, the band Ida May, they, uh, mm. that, was, that was a commission. And the guitar, you know, all the painting on that guitar is on the back. There's nothing on the front. Yeah. I saw the guitar, this great patina, and I'm looking at it and everything, and we were talking about me painting something on the front, and he showed up. I'm like, it's on the back. And he loves it because now, you know, I'll see him playing it. And he'll like flip it around and. That's great. You know, it's, it's, Let's, see uh, what else. Let's see what else we got here. I got a couple more. Um, that's another great one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one where I, uh, you know, again, where I'm sort of forcing the, you know, the, the design, you know, kind of wedging it in and I've, you know, I've got this energy going into the strings and I'm kind of trying to, by, by, I've, done, I've done this a few times where I'm putting that smoke ring around the, the bullet blast. To, that's sort of, it, 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 that's my way of kind of uh, psychologically uh, taking away the, uh, the, the evil power of the, of the actual fire arm, you know, yeah, I feel like it changes it a little bit rather than yeah. just sort of, you know, making it look like blazing guns. I, and I, I do love that, you know, as opposed to the old cowboy guitars where they would fill up the full front of with various right characters. And, yeah. yeah, I like that you have one, and that you did it that way. It's beautiful. Yeah. Let's see. And then, yeah. Have, and and so the and those have started to progress into you know sometimes I'll paint an unexpected thing on. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be where we're at now. Yeah. Which is there's an unexpected yeah. thing. So you have a a, yeah. a moonwalking astronaut. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, and that's on a um, that is a Waterloo, that's one of the Waterloos, and uh, you know I was worried. It's one of those things where you know you don't. Listen, I really like it when people like my work, right? And I guess it bothers me on some level if they don't, but I don't care why in either case. Yeah. So like, cause I can only do it one way. I can only do it the way I see it. Like if you like, it, I don't care why you like it because that's not going to change the way I'm, I'm not going to suddenly start doing the same thing. Mm. And I don't care if you don't like it because I'm going to, I can't, you know, I'm just going to keep going. But I was worried. I was like, man, what? Are the guys at Waterloo going to think about me painting this friggin' astronaut <laughs> on the front of this guitar? And uh, um, it was like two days later, all of a sudden, you know, I get this little ding in, in my Instagram account. And, um, and Waterloo had posted all seven of the guitars that I painted and gave me a shout out. And man, I was off the races after that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah, and Waterloo is uh, is a line um, of guitars that Collings has been making for the last maybe six or seven years, and yeah, and they're they're actually I think they're most of them are patterned after old old guitars from the '40s yeah. and '50s, some of which were cowboy guitars. Yeah, yeah, little harmonies and stuff. I got one last one for you here, and this is this is one of my favorites, and it is not a guitar. But it's a violin. Yeah, that was very <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me about this one. Uh, that was, um, you know, Amanda uh, Shires had uh, been talking to me about. I'd, I've done quite a bit of art for her, and in fact, Amanda is one of those people that that's really done the deep dive with me, and and actually has some of my work on canvas, you know, and um, we have paintings of like the city and stuff, right. and uh, she had been after me to to you know, to paint her, her fiddle, you know, and I just say, no, 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 no way. No, I'm not going to do it. I just been saying, no, I don't even want to talk about it. No, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to do it. And, uh, I went out, you know, they do this little, uh, um, uh, they do a show, um, 
called like ISO lounging that they started to do during the pandemic. Yeah. And, uh, and so she asked me if I'd come out and watch them tape it one day. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say no to a, even though, even though I've got to be socially distanced by 20 feet and all masked up, I'm not going to say no to a private concert with Amanda Shires and Jason Isbell. I'm just not going to say no. So I went out there and, and, you know, it was just me, one chair, you know, them jamming, soundboard guy behind me, everybody masked up. And, and when it was over, uh, you know, she was like, oh, let me get my fiddle for you. And I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> She's like, I mean, you know, she just ignores me and she goes off and, and Jason was sitting there and I was like, man, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about doing this. I don't, I don't know if I feel right about doing it. I'm scared, you know? And he just kind of looked at me like, yeah, you're going to do it. And uh, <laughs> as she came up and there it was, and this thing's just absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I'm looking at it and yeah, I don't know. Just, I saw an astronaut smoking a dizzy stick, carrying a big flower in space. And on the front of the fiddle, is just the helmet with like, you know, smoke curling out of it up onto the front. So that's how that happened. And, uh, and so she didn't, she didn't ask for an astronaut. No, she, I knew she wanted, I knew she liked my astronauts and my robots, you know, but I yeah. think, yeah, she just let me run with it. You know, I mean, that's, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks man. I mean, well, and what obviously now you have Joey Gibbons and Peter Frampton to to do. What's next? I'm doing Peter Frampton, uh, doing uh, Billy Gibbons, and I've, you know what? I'm going to grab this. I've got another. I've got another scary one. Oh God! Look at this gorgeous. You see? There you go. Oh, it's a bourgeois. Oh my God! I don't want to do it. I've been trying to get him. Sounds so good, and, I, and he's like, "No paint it, no paint it, no paint it." And so I've been sitting on it and think I'm going to do three white roses right here, and then on the back he's going to get the full-on skeleton girl. That looks like a brand new guitar. It's I. It's you know again, like I said, man. It's a leap of faith, but you know, using that paint that I use. But if you want to know how it is to use it take four pieces of colored bubble gum, put them in the microwave, hit it for five seconds, and then when they're liquid, pull it out and try to paint with it real quick until they turn solid again. So this painting with this paint is challenging, and it's like, you it's one shot. Wow. You got one shot. There's no margin for error, zero margin for error. And so I'm nervous. All right, well, when you finish that one, you have to send us some pics. So, um, hopefully I didn't talk to you for like four hours. No, you know? man, I could go on longer because there's so many more great paintings that you've done. But I know. Hey, can you hang on, one, here. hang on for one second? Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing an interview. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. You got the banana phone? Yeah, there's all kind of, you know, even though this is in the secret studio in Nashville, there's, there's all oh. sorts of great stuff for, in my life. <laughs> I see. You know? Why did I choose to interview uh, end our interview that way? I don't know. Well, it's it's timely because I guess I haven't watched The Mandalorian, but I guess a lot of people have. So I haven't they, either. Yeah. I maybe we should both watch. Yeah, maybe we should. I know people really love the little guys. That's, that's where Baby Yoda's from, right? Ba yeah. 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 It's been a big hit. Pandemic yeah. hit. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Maybe I will too. Yeah. Actually, you know, I say that, but... Uh, my wife's gonna, gonna be downtown be painting my Billy Gibbons and listening to. I'm gonna uh, be painting uh, Billy Gibbons tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll send you a picture tomorrow. In about nine hours, I'm gonna have a very, very lot of work done on that Billy Gibbons case. Sweet. Yeah. All right, man. Man, it's Thank great you. talking to you. You know. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And I hope to see you soon. I hope so too. I hope so okay. too. You can give me a guitar lesson. Uh, you could maybe give me one from what I just heard. <laughs> I think not, my friend. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right. See you, man. Bye. Bye. So that was great to hear all about guitar case painting and painting guitars and being in that community in Nashville. And James is, a, a, I'm sure, a pal of all kinds of great people. I'm sure people love him down there. And uh, there you go.
So if you want a custom guitar case, he's the man to hit up. Check back in a couple days for the next episode of Let's Hear It.